Okay, so now we're gonna host a static website in an S3 bucket on our AWS and see how we need to go about doing that. The way we're gonna do this is going to be in a series of very simple steps. And at the end, we should see our static website hosted in an S3 bucket. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an S3 bucket. Then we're going to place our site in our bucket. After that, we are going to allow public access so that we can access our website and then we're going to visit this website via index.html. Lastly, when we're done with our site, we're going to delete the bucket that we created for this demo. Okay, so let's get started and see how we can set up our S3 bucket before we can do anything else. So to set up an S3 bucket, the first thing you have to do is head over to your AWS console, like so. Once you're in your AWS management console, from here you have to go to your S3. Once that loads up, we're going to see how we can create a bucket for our project. Perfect, so now that our S3 is loaded up, we can actually see that we already have three buckets in here. We don't wanna use any of the buckets that pre-exist. We're going to create a new bucket for our demo site. So what we're going to do is just, you're gonna see the button here that says create bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and click that bucket. We're just gonna set up a new bucket. So we can call this my dash skill curve dash demo dash bucket so that we know that this is the bucket we've allocated for our demonstration once we've done that we don't need to change any of these settings now we can move on and create our bucket this can take a few seconds so i'm going to pause it here and come back when it's done once your bucket is created, you will see this green message on the top that told you that you have successfully created your bucket, my skill curve demo bucket, and you should see it in your list of buckets here. Now, what you have to do from here is you have to go inside your bucket, and now you'll see that there is nothing inside your bucket. So from here, what you have to do is you will see this button on the right side that says upload. You'll need to upload your files from here. Now, my website, is ready to go in this folder right here. So let me bring that up and show that to you guys. So this is our website right here. This is a template that I got online. So that's what we will be using to set up our static website today. So what I can do is I can just select all of these files here and drag it and drop it into here. And that is basically all you have to do. And once you've done that, you can just upload and it'll upload your files for you. You should note that if you have a lot of files in small sizes, that this process may take a longer time. However, since we don't have that many files right now, this shouldn't take more than a minute. I'll be back when this has done uploading. Okay, now everything that we had to upload to our bucket has been uploaded. Since we don't need this anymore, I'm just gonna go ahead and close that and maximize this page. So you can see that all of the files that we had to upload to our bucket have been uploaded. So we can close this and go back to our S3 bucket. And there we go. We can see that the folders are coming in nicely along with everything else that we need for this bucket. Now what we need to do is make sure that this is publicly accessible. The way we're gonna do that is we have to go into permissions. Now when you go into permissions, you'll see that you'll have this green tick here which says that all public access has been blocked. We don't want this to be the case. So we need to edit this and we need to uncheck this box that says block all public access. So we uncheck that box, make sure no boxes here are ticked either. And then we save the changes. And once you do that, because this is generally a dangerous setting that they don't want you to do, they want you to confirm the settings manually. And you have to do that by writing confirm. So we're just going to do that and confirm. And once that's done, you'll see the successfully edited block public access settings for this bucket message show up on the top. Now, when you come back, you'll see the block all public access is off, but it doesn't end there. We also need to set a bucket policy. So you'll see this button here that says edit. We need to go here. Perfect. So now that we're here, there's one thing we have to do, which is that we need to allow the get object to work here. So when you go to filter services, you can just write S3. And once you have the S3 actions, 
once they load up, we can look for get object. There we go. So now we have allowed get object and And now we can go ahead and try to save these changes. It's going to give you an error at the bottom. And the API response is going to be that you need the field principle to have something in it before you can save the settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to principle here. And we're just going to put this little field here. Of course, we need those brackets. And so we're going to put those there. And now what this does is it tells AWS basically that I'm hosting a website in this S3 bucket. And so it's going to manage itself accordingly. However, we're still not done here because we've left this resource empty. So if we go ahead to try to save these changes, it's going to give us a new error. Here we go. So now you can see that it says that the action does not apply to any resources in the statement. And so what we have to do now is we have to go ahead and give it the resource. So we can remove these brackets and we can take the bucket ARN from here. So now we have our bucket ARN, but it doesn't stop here because this is just the bucket. We haven't specified any resources yet. The resources are all the objects within the bucket. So we would say that forward slash star to apply this to all the objects inside the bucket. And when we've done that, we can save these changes and it should save successfully. Now, once we've done that, we can go back to our objects and we can head over to our index.html. So if we get in the object URL, we can just click our object URL here and it should open up as a website for us. And there we go. So it's loading up. Of course, this may take longer than just dry running it on your local machine because, of course, it takes the resources from the bucket. And so that resource can take some time to load. And now we're in our website. So as you can see, this is a really basic website. It's just a static website, a template, really. And it's just here to show you how we can set up our bucket. We have a bunch of nice pictures and animations here. While well done on making it this far, this is from Show Abe. Congrats on setting up your S3 website. It's me. And this is how you would set up a static website in your S3 bucket. So now that you've set up your website, say that you just wanted to do this for demonstration purposes the same way I'm doing it today. So what we can do is we can simply go back to our AWS and get this bucket taken down and deleted. So let's go back to our AWS and see how we can do that. Okay, so here we are back in our S3 management panel, and we can see all of our S3 buckets, our buckets right here. And now we're done with our website. So we just want to take it down and get rid of the bucket. So it's really simple. The first thing we have to do is we have to click on this bucket and we have to empty out the contents. So if you click this button here, it'll ask you, do you want to permanently delete all the objects in this bucket? And since we do, we have to write permanently delete in this field here. So I'm just going to write that down, permanently delete. There we go. And once you do that, it shouldn't take too long for it to delete or completely empty out all the contents inside your bucket. As we can see, there's a status bar here and yep, it's gone. And now this bucket is completely empty. We can confirm this by visiting our bucket and seeing what's inside. So let's see what it gets when it loads objects. Nothing. It has no objects. We've emptied it out. And so we can go back and now we can go ahead and we can delete this bucket. So to delete the bucket, it's going to confirm with you whether or not you actually want to delete this bucket. And to do that, you would have to write the name. So we can just copy the name over from up there and paste it down there and we can delete the bucket. And there we go. Your bucket has now been deleted. And we should be seeing the original three buckets that we saw the first time we came into the Amazon S3 management panel. Yep, there we go. So this was a simple demonstration on how you can set up a static website using Amazon S3.